Hi, I'm Peter Chan, National Weather Service Program Lead of the Alaska Weather Show, and I have a very important change notice to share with you. If you haven't already heard the last TV broadcast of Alaska weather, at least in the traditional sense, over the airwaves will be on Friday, June 30th. Starting on July 1st, the National Weather Service will provide a modified web-based version of the program on a new YouTube channel. We will be moving on YouTube from the Alaska Public Media site to at NWS Alaska, so you can go ahead and subscribe uh, to this channel ahead of time. A public comment period remains open through July 30th, so please send your comments and concerns to nws.service dash change comments at noaa.gov. If you have any additional questions, you may reach carrie.hazley at noaa.gov and donald.moore at noaa.gov. We thank you for your patience and understanding. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Sunday show of Alaska weather. Up first here on the uh, fire danger chart for grass, uh, pretty good here through most of the area. You got some high or medium areas here to the west, a couple of bands out there on toward, uh, actually right down to the uh, Eastern Norton Bay Coast, Eastern Norton Sound Coast there. Otherwise, uh, some spotty areas just north of the Alaska Range. And again, this is a forecast for tomorrow of uh, high to very high fire danger, but not too bad actually. But the uh, Upper Yukon Valley area, that's still the worst fire danger in the state with some extreme now showing back up uh, for tomorrow there up in that area. And maybe some high fire danger in a small area there in the central Copper River Basin areas and then medium down over the southern southeast coast. And for spruce, uh, pretty good out here over most of the state, western to central interior. Some high fire danger for spruce there in the Tanana Valley area and then just north of the Alaska Range and that central Copper River Basin area. But by far the heaviest fire danger, the highest fire danger is up there in the Yukon Flats. Uh, very high to extreme, again, for spruce up in those areas. And from there, looking at uh, the hazardous weather graphic, uh, shaded area here along the Alaska Range, that's, uh, they're still under the influence of a wind advisory that's been out since midnight last night <clears throat> and is, will remain out through this evening for uh, scheduled to end at midnight tonight. And that's for uh, 20 to 30 mile an hour southerly winds with gusts uh, 50 to 65 miles an hour. And Delta Junction had a peak wind gust about 64 miles an hour today. So it was pretty much right on the button there as far as the forecast for yesterday went. And that due to this strong front moving northward here, bringing the gusty winds with it, 70 mile an hour wind gusts of Portage Lake recorded there. And uh, anywhere from uh, 30 to 50 mile an hour winds across areas of South Central Alaska with that system holding up. And uh, some rain now pushing into the uh, Eastern North Gulf Coast and the Panhandle uh, rain today at uh, over toward Juneau. Main low pulled back to the west here. And so this front really weakening as it moves northward and some moisture tracking eastward there along the Eastern Arctic coast, uh, but nothing too significant. <laughs> Excuse me, there. And a lot of clouds though out over the Bering Sea, but some breaks on the south side of this front. Had some breaks here over Cook Inlet and areas of Copper River Basin, Gulcana, seeing wind gusts out of the south to 45 miles an hour. And breaking out, temperatures up in the mid to upper 70s this afternoon, north of the Alaska Range there and on into the Yukon Valley and some more sunshine here, especially over the central and western north slope. And rolling that again, See the main low here kind of pulling back to the west, uh, crossing the Alaska Peninsula last night. And uh, as the front pulls eastward here, of course, that weakens the front, getting away from the main low center, but still holding together enough to put some rain uh, in, brought about an inch of rain to Kodiak Island uh, as it passed through. Pretty dry day, especially earlier today, pretty nice conditions, drier conditions following in as that spread up into Southern Alaska, but still a lot of clouds around and the gusty winds. Uh, here through South Central Alaska, actually all the way out to the Southwest Coast and up to the Alaska Range. Scattered thunderstorm activity developing again here over the interior areas, but uh, not so much, pretty dry, more stable over the Eastern interior up to the Yukon Flats and uh, some fog along the Arctic coast 
and this low, about 992 millibars, keeping areas of showers here over much of the central and eastern Bering Sea, down into the Aleutians, kind of a trough here, a little bit of an enhancement of the precipitation there. And for tonight, that front uh, kind of stalls out and weakens in place here, but keeps some light rain going over the northern southeast coast. Cloudy skies with chance of showers. Southern areas there, weak low develops on that frontal boundary there to the southwest, but quite weak, 1,010 millibars. Weak high pressure builds in. That's going to really lighten the winds up, continue to drop the winds off here for the uh, North Gulf Coast, South Central Alaska area. It stays a little breezy out here with a little bit more gradient and a couple of troughs rotating up, keeping it showery and breezy with light rain, fog and drizzle. Kodiak Island trying to push in mainly the southwest part of the island. And then showers out here with this low over the Perbloff Island areas. Otherwise, low clouds and fog with some higher pressure over the western Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And then the remnants of that front here really breaking up and uh, just some showers as that pushes up toward the Brooks Range, extending down in across Kotzebue Sound, Seward Peninsula there into the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island this evening. Low clouds and fog along or off the Arctic coast. And uh, moving on to tomorrow, <clears throat> again, uh, partly and mostly sunny to start. And then as the day wears on, those clouds will build up and probably will trigger some thunderstorm and shower activity scattered around the central interior. And uh, remnants of that front kind of hung up there along the panhandle for continued uh, cloudy and chance of rain, but drier down to the south. Chance of showers Kodiak Island, chance of showers Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, southern Kuskokwim Valley. Chance of showers mainly over the mountainous terrain of south central Alaska. And then for uh, Tuesday, we'll see that low slides a little to the southeast there, picks up a little more moisture here for showers and rain for the Aleutians. Another front develops, weak front for some rain into Kodiak Island, scattered thunderstorms over the central interior, dry to the east and dry to the west of that, out into the Bering Sea, and a dry day for the Panhandle after early morning low clouds and fog. Lows tonight in the 50s, some areas in the upper 40s, mostly in the 50s though, highs tomorrow. Upper 50s to upper 60s, maybe near 70 for the northern panhandle around Haines and uh, Copper River Basin, Gulcana, Glen Allen, Copper Center, lows 40s to lower 50s, followed by highs on Tuesday, near 70 for the Copper River Basin area, 65 to 70, except upper 50s along the coast for the panhandle, up to the north, lows 40s and 50s, lower 30s for the Arctic coast, upper 30s for the Bering Strait, Highs, 70 to 75, Yukon Flats down to about Eagle and upper 60s, lower 70s for the mid and upper Tanaw Valley to about Northway and Toke. Lower 40s to lower 50s for the uh, Arctic coast, followed by lows, 40s and 50s, still in the 30s for the Arctic coast, followed by highs, 70 to 75, give or take there in the central and eastern interior areas. And down to the southwest, lows in the 40s for the Aleutians, lower 40s, mid 40s for the Alaska Peninsula area, followed by highs for tomorrow in the uh, lower 50s, Privilof, southwest coast, upper 40s, lower 50s for the Aleutians in the Alaska Peninsula area. And then lows about the same, lower 40s uh, for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, and then followed by highs in the upper 40s, lower 50s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather for Monday morning looks like this along the southeast coast IFR on up into the northern inner channels there and over to about Yakutat. Some IFR for the North Gulf Coast, some IFR for the Alaska Range, as well as the Southwest Mountains here. Some areas of IFR for Kodiak Island into the uh, Pacific side of the Aleutian Range. And then a bigger area of IFR out here sitting in the Bering Sea, extending southward there almost to Unalaska Island, but covering Unamac Un Un Island and the Pribloffs up to St. Lawrence Island, marginal for the Aleutians, some IFR up along and mostly off the Arctic coast there could uh, clip the central coastal areas. Otherwise pretty good in the interior, mostly VFR for the afternoon. Interior looking really good, VFR flying except uh, South and east of the Alaska Range here and over the southwest interior and the southwest coast, marginal VFR and isolated IFR here for the North Gulf Coast. IFR still holding over the same area of the southeast coast there, especially over the northern inside waters. IFR farther off the Arctic coast and now marginal VFR hitting areas of the Arctic coast, meaning VFR in other locations. 
And all the IFR here out over the Bering Sea, north and west of the Aleutians. And moving on to Tuesday morning. Big area of IFR now over the Bering Sea, right up to Ninevak Island, almost to St. Lawrence Island. Definitely covering the Pribilofs down to the Western Alaska Peninsula. Most of the Aleutians IFR for the morning hours and IFR Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, east and southern Kodiak Island, right on up along the uh, Kenai Peninsula there into Western Prince William Sound. Marginal VFR up to the Alaska Range into the uh, central Southern Copper River Basin. And again, mostly off the Arctic coast up there, North Slope, Brooks Range into the interior looking really good. Solid IFR in the forecast for the Panhandle from Yakutat on down toward Dixon Entrance. That burns off in the afternoon, leaving just some marginal VFR in the central and south coastal areas, but good VFR over the inside waters. Some IFR here, uh, Prince William Sound, and uh, that's about it. Otherwise, the interior looking really good. VFR all the way up to the Arctic coast, marginal VFR there. Huge area of IFR here from the Bering Strait all of the Bering Sea, clipping the uh, Yukon Delta Coast, Nunavak Island, the IFR Pribilofs, and uh, west of Nikolsky, out to Shimiana too, probably the Komodorskis, uh, all in the IFR zone. And from there, looking at uh, passes, Anatuvik, marginal VFR for the day Monday, as is Adigan, and Lake Clark and Merrill, occasional marginal VFR, trending better into the afternoon, possibly. Rainy VFR uh, turning toward marginal VFR due to some afternoon buildups. Windy though VFR. Eastern Alaska Range VFR for both Isabel and Mentasta. And for uh, Tanita, optimistically VFR. And for Portage, marginal VFR at times. Maybe a little lower in the morning hours, but uh, better in the afternoon. Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR to IFR. Some moisture slips on up from the south. And for the freezing levels, uh, 4,000 feet here over the uh, southeast Bering Sea into western Bristol Bay, Kuskokwim Bay, and then about 6,000 feet here over the southwest part of the state, 8 to 9,000 feet over the north slope and the eastern interior, and about 10 to 12,000 feet or so for the southeast coast. And for icing, the greatest threat got a well southerly flow here, this moisture keeping the western part of the state in an elevated icing potential threat situation there of uh, isolated moderate at worst here areas of it's all kind of broken up so nothing really solid until you get down to the alaska peninsula into kodiak island and probably a little bit greater threat of some moderate rime icing will be along the north coast of the panhandle and to uh jet stream winds here southeast interior suddenly 60 to 70 knots and uh, otherwise, stronger winds well south of Kodiak Island. And for 9,000 feet, 40 to 45 knot winds here on the backside of this low off the southwest coast. Pretty light here, Gulf of Alaska, central eastern interior, but southwest up to 40 knots for the northern panhandle. 3,000 feet, uh, lighter winds here, maybe uh, 20 to maybe 30 knots there along the central coast of the panhandle. Some west southwesterlies. 35 to 45 knots, strongest there on the western Arctic coast. Turbulence, southwest interior, moderate turbulence, Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians. Technology. It's the rhythm of our everyday life. We're more dependent on satellite and communication systems than at any other time in history. Disruptions can affect our economy and even our safety. To prepare for the effects of such events and minimize impacts, we need to look outside our atmosphere, some 93 million miles away, at a star we call the Sun. It's our main energy source. It warms the earth and grows our food. While the sun and the space between may seem pleasant from our perspective, it's anything but peaceful. At its surface exists a chaotic state of eruptions and radiation. And unlike Vegas, what happens at the sun doesn't stay at the sun. 
Space weather is essentially emissions from the sun, uh, radiation, magnetic field that erupts from the solar surface, pumped out into space, sometimes right towards Earth. When it impacts the Earth, it impacts our technology. That's what we call space weather. These solar events and their effects at Earth can disrupt systems we take for granted. From causing blackouts to the power grid, to delaying offshore drilling operations due to inaccurate GPS data. Interference with communication systems can force air traffic to reroute and impact rescue response and coordination. Outside our atmosphere, solar radiation can harm astronauts and the systems they depend on. The good news is that these eruptions can be detected early. Forecasters at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, have their eyes on the sun at all times. The Space Weather Prediction Center is part of the National Weather Service and is very much like a normal weather forecast office. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're looking at data, we're looking at imagery, we're looking at model outputs. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches of imminent activity to our customers so they can take action. In many ways, forecasting space weather is a lot like forecasting hurricanes. Those who rely on space weather forecasts, like electric power grid managers, are informed early on and can begin taking protective action. When we see an eruption on the sun, Space weather forecasters will issue a watch. This is much like a hurricane watch. When a hurricane sits offshore of Miami, for example, perhaps 48 hours out, we too can see way in advance that something may be coming towards the Earth. As the storm moves toward us, it hits a monitoring spacecraft orbiting a million miles away from Earth. It's kind of our, our buoy sitting out there offshore, and that hurricane about 30, 45 minutes before it makes landfall, we'll get the measurements from the buoy. That's what the spacecraft does for us. That big eruption that left the sun hits the spacecraft. Now we've got the measurements of exactly what's going to impact us here on Earth, and we issue the warnings to give the power grid a heads up that the storm is now imminent. An interesting element to this whole process is that when the forecasters issue the alert, the power grid receives the alert, takes the necessary actions to protect the grid, and the average citizen never knows anything ever happened. The number of customers who rely on space weather information continues to grow. As our reliance on technology increases, so will our need for constant monitoring of the sun. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. GPS has changed society. Most people don't realize how remarkable and how many different applications there are. The GPS has become an integral part, not just of our daily lives as far as cell phones and guidance for our cars and mapping, but the whole uh, system in agriculture is really relying heavily on high accuracy GPS. So they're using GPS to plant those seeds with centimeter accuracy. And then they can come behind it and, and irrigate and fertilize right where that seed is with that one centimeter accuracy. 
the GPS creates a line for the operator that he can steer along, or you go to another level and the operator doesn't steer anymore and the tractor has an automatic steering system on it, much like a cruise control on a car, except for when I push the button, it doesn't drive a set speed. When I push a button, it stays on a predefined line. You don't even need lights. You can do it at nighttime. You program your GPS and it's driving that tractor for you. So it's, uh, it's huge and it's changing the way that the farmers farm the fields. Six or seven days out. There's an interest in GPS applications from space weather side because when the sun is erupted, it causes GPS to falter and in some cases it doesn't work at all. Productivity may suffer to a certain degree in that there's no way that I as a human being can steer as good eight hours a day as a, a GPS system is going to do. It's going to be the same all day long. Some of the other application technologies, those are going to be gone. We're not going to have the ability to do good section control on sprayers and planters and fertilizer applicators without GPS. We see a huge growing customer base in so many different industries, so many different sectors now relying on GPS and high precision GPS. It's all big customers for us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Now moving on into <clears throat> marine forecasts here for uh, Monday. Clarence Strait, southeast winds at 10 knots with two foot seas. Stevens Passage, southeast winds at 10 knots, seas two feet. Lincoln Al, same thing, southeast winds at 10 knots with two foot seas. For the south coast here, southerlies at 15 to 20, seas around six feet. Southeast 20 knots on the central coast and east at 15 for the north coast. Moving on to Tuesday. For the south coast here, we were looking at mostly a westerly breeze there blowing onto Prince Wales Island at 10. Central coast, southerly 10 to 15. North coast, southeast 15 knots, seas five to six feet. Clarence Strait, northwest breeze at 15 knots, otherwise pretty light winds from the southeast here for the central and northern inner channels with slight seas. North Gulf Coast tomorrow, light variable winds, seas at around five, maybe six feet. Light variable winds also in the forecast for Prince Liam Sound Monday. And for Cook Inlet, northeast 10 to 15, seas one to two feet. And for the Barren Islands, southeast winds 25 knots, or Kamishak Bay, southeast winds 25 knots, Barren Islands, southeast winds at 20 knots. And for Tuesday, Cook Inlet, north to northeast breeze, 10 to 15 knots, seas at two feet. Small craft advisories here for Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay. Easterlies at 25 knots, with seas only four to six feet though. And for the uh, western North Gulf Coast, south of uh, Resurrection Bay there, east winds at 20 knots. And for the eastern North Gulf Coast, southeast of 15, Prince William Sound, east winds 15 knots, seas two feet. Kodiak Island, Monday, south to southeast winds at 20. Alaska Peninsula, south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots. And Bristol Bay, southeast wind 20 knots, seas three feet. For Tuesday, Kodiak Island area, east 15 to 20 knots. Alaska Peninsula, small craft advisory, southwesterlies at 25 knots. Bristol Bay, southeast winds 20 knots with three foot seas. And for the Eastern Aleutian, small craft advisories for the day on Monday, west southwest at 25. Central Aleutians, westerlies at about 20 knots here for Adak and Atka. And then one's becoming light and variable at 10 knots there for the Western Aleutians. <clears throat> And for Tuesday, we've got uh, small craft advisories, most areas here from the west and southwest, 25 to 30 knots there for the western Aleutians, west to 25 for Adak and Atka. Seas running about seven feet there and west southwest winds at 25 knots for the Fox Islands with six to eight foot seas. 
for the southwest coast tomorrow, uh, east to southeast winds. 15 to 20 knots here, and for the Pribilof Islands, north at 15 with four-foot seas. Northeast winds 20 for St. Matthew Island, and for St. Lawrence Island, winds east at 15 knots. And for Tuesday, Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, easterly winds at 15 knots. Same thing for the Yukon Delta Coast. East at 20 for the Cuscombe Delta Coast. Northwest 20 knot winds for St. Matthew Island. Turn northerly, there is a blow across the Pribilof Islands. And for the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast for tomorrow, west winds 15 to 20 knots. Otherwise, for the uh, central and west side, northeast winds 15 knots. And for the Chuck CC, south winds 15 to 20 knots. Moving on to Tuesday, for the Chuck CC here, anywhere from east to south winds at 10 knots, so pretty light there with seas and open water areas at one to two feet. Southeast at 10 knots for the western Arctic coast, 15 knot winds out of the east for the central coast, and the east side here looking at east winds at around 10 knots. And uh, for tonight again, Remnants of that front coming northward here brings a band of showers with it into the Brooks Range. Otherwise dry behind it in the central interior with the showers tapering off, thunderstorms, and uh, showers lingering for the Alaska Range, Kenai Peninsula. Showers more widespread here over the southwest interior, uh, Cusquam Delta into Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula area. And some rain lingers over the uh, panhandle. And for tomorrow, Still a weak trough there, keeping it kind of showery in the north, a little drier to the south. And again, uh, temperatures should warm enough to trigger some afternoon scattered thunderstorm activity over the interior areas. And moving on to Tuesday, we'll see this low. Drifts eastward a little bit. It's going to spin another front up into Kodiak Island for more rain. Same thing for Bristol Bay and the southwest coast, as well as some rain up to the north Gulf Coast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.